Hello, today we're going to be working um, in chapter four, working with frames. And um, some of the tools we're going to be using is the step and repeat menu. We're going to be using the gap tool, um, the align panel, and the layers panel. Um, I'm going to start out right now with number 412, which um, wants us to open the file ID41. Um, from your chapter four data files. We're gonna apply fills and strokes today. So I will navigate to my chapter four data files. And it wants us to open up ID 4 1. Let's navigate to that. ID41. So open that up. Okay, it says save it as orientation and verify that the guides are showing. Looks to me like the guides are showing here. I'll go ahead and file save as orientation. Go ahead and save that on the desktop. Move my toolbar over here. Okay. Step two. Click the workspace switcher list arrow on the menu bar, then click advanced. Here's my workspace, and um, it usually always defaults to essentials. We're going to click on that and hit advanced. Step three, click the rectangle tool, then click anywhere on the page. Here's the rectangle tool, and again, you can hover if you forget where that's located. There is a difference between the rectangle frame tool and the rectangle tool, so try not to get that mixed up. Okay, then click anywhere on the page, which I did. Step four, type two in the width text box, type two in the height text box, then click OK. To tab two, say OK. Then it says step five, switch to the selection tool, then click swatches in the stack of collapse panels to open the swatches panel. The selection tool is up here. Swatches is over here. Step six, verify that the fill button is activated. Um, and that's something you always have to remain conscious. You can do that here over in the swatches panel. And you can also find that over here, the fill. You want to make sure that that one is in front. Click it to activate. Now it is indeed in front. Step seven, click green on the swatches panel. Okay, there we go. Now we have a green square in the middle of our page. Step eight. Click the stroke button on the tools panel over here. The stroke button, we want to click that to activate. Step nine, click brick red on the swatches panel. Okay, you probably can barely see that here, but you probably noticed that it got, if I go to none, now you probably notice that it did get thicker. You can see slightly it bumping out. Step 10, open the stroke panel. Type six in the weight text box. Okay, I'll open the stroke panel. Type six in the weight text box. Then press enter or return on the Mac. Step 11, click the align stroke to outside button. Now the, this is great because you sometimes don't want to compromise what is inside a shape. So this one aligns stroke to the inside this one aligns the stroke to the outside, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to align the stroke to the outside. So if you notice, it actually changes quite a bit um, depending on which one you, you choose. Okay, so it wants us to do that for step 12. It wants us to align it to the center and then align it to the inside. There's the center, inside, 
outside. Okay, and I think it ends on center, so in or I'm sorry, inside button. Step 14, click the top left reference point in the control panel, type zero in the X and Y text boxes. That's up here. And again, you can click on any one of these reference points to tell InDesign to start from a specific um, area or a specific refer reference point on your page. The top left is what it asks us to do. Um, it wants us to um, type zero in the X and Y boxes. So here we have, it's at three and two, so that's where it's located um, in the XY coordinates on the page. So now we're gonna type zero, tab zero, return. So now it's starting at the top left, and you can see in figure 22 on that page, 412 in InDesign, um, in the InDesign textbook, um, the same thing. Figure 22 shows that we're starting at the top left side of the page. Okay, so it should resemble figure 22. Click 15, or step 15, click file on the menu bar, then click save, file, save. Okay, we're gonna continue on for a little while longer for this um, demo. Uh, we don't, we have about seven, eight minutes left. So uh, click 15 or step 15, click file on the menu bar, then click save. After that, we're gonna bump down and, and um, begin under use the step and repeat command. This is a really handy command um, for the times where you don't wanna have to visually um, or manually guess where something was positioned on the page. Instead, you can be very accurate with this. Um, so number one, make sure the green rectangle is still selected, which it is, you see that bounding box showing um, click the stroke button on the tools panel, then click the apply none button. So we are on the tools panel and it wants us to click the apply none button. If I move the tools in a little bit more here. The apply none is right here. I can see that a little bit better for you. Okay, and then we have um, step two, press V to access the selection tool and it is accessed already. So, um, and then it wants us to drag the frame so that its top left corner is aligned with the top left corner of the page. Okay, so what that wants us to do is when we don't have a stroke any longer, sometimes um, our square may have moved down a little bit. It wants us to just make sure that that is aligned with that top left edge of the page. So step three, click edit on the menu bar, then click step and repeat. Okay, so step and repeat. And then you're going to verify that the horizontal and vertical text boxes are set to zero on the control panel, as we did earlier. And then um, go ahead and um, put the vertical and horizontal offset to two. It wants us to type three in the repeat count box and then click OK. So what we just did is we just um, told InDesign to copy that green box three times, but do it every two inches so that we were able to kind of stagger the same green box across our page. OK? The three new rectangles are created, each one two inches to the right and two inches down from the previous one as shown in figure 24. So your work should look like figure 24. So number five, click the selection tool. It's already selected. Then click anywhere on the pasteboard to deselect. You might wanna get in the habit of doing that, clicking on the pasteboard to deselect because InDesign 
a lot of times if you're selecting an object, you have to deselect in order to select another object, um, especially if you're in, the, you're in the type tool going to another area of text, field of text. So now we're in, um, we are on step six. Select the top two rectangles. Okay, I have the top two selected. Click edit on the menu bar, then click step and repeat. Okay, it kind of defaults to what we had um, applied earlier. Now turn the page. We're on InDesign 414. Number seven, type one in the repeat count box. So we're going to apply something different. Type zero in the vertical offset text box and four in the horizontal. So zero, four. And then click OK. See what ends up happening now is we're filling these with sort of a checkerboard effect. Um, you have to be kind of mathematically savvy. How big is your, your square? Where do you want them positioned on the page? What x, y coordinates? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, select the bottom two rectangles on the page. Now we're going to do something different. Shift to select more than one item at a time. Click edit and we're on step eight. Then click step and repeat. Okay, number nine, step nine. Type one in the repeat count text box. It's already set to one. Type zero in the vertical offset. Same as before. Type negative four in the horizontal offset and select zero, or and select and click OK. So now we have completed the checkerboard effect. Number 10, press W to switch to preview. I don't know if you knew that, but you can always do that. Um, hit W and it, it does clear everything from around the pasteboard and gives you sort of a, a, look, a glimpse of what your piece looks like, like if you're working and you want to see something as if it's mounted. Okay, go ahead and save your file. File. I already saved. So you can hit Control S on the PC or Command S on the Mac. So I have completed um, InDesign 412 through 414, both applying fills and strokes and using the step and repeat command. Um, now go ahead and continue on with use the live distribute technique um, and see how the gap tool works for you.